Welcome to this part. We are looking at part 13 of this playlist. This playlist is focused on AWS Solution Architect Professional Certification. In this part, we will look at questions around these three topics. Do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button. So let's look at this. This is a big question. You can pause this video to read this carefully. Basically, there is an application and the utilization is 30% for the CPU. They plan to extend the application to a wide audience base and they expect that the load would increase 10 times. So this 30% may get loaded. So we need to understand here is how can this be possible with a minimum feasible mm -hmm. effort. So if you see the first one says you create an IAM policy and it allows access to EC2 instances only for the security team and then apply this policy to AWS organization's master account. This looks correct. Uh, we will first scan through other options. D says that so here they are saying that you can do SAML federation for all accounts. So we should do it uh, at the org level, at a master account level, not for all accounts. And then it says block SAML from authenticating API calls if anyone other than security team accesses. So, so this is incorrect. C says you create an org unit in the organizations, move all accounts in this unit and use SCP to apply whitelist policies. So you know there are certain countries which are banned. If I know that I I can only allow certain countries to access this application, I can include those uh, countries or those IPs in the whitelist. But here we don't know who is the audience as well because there can be a wide set of audience. Since we don't know that this is wrong, B says you create a new tagged based IAM policy. See tags, tag based IAM policy. It Tags means for me it is resource tag. Resource tag is a logical grouping. So you you do not you know the access like if you have resources in a resource tag, it you you do not apply a policy to a tag and it gets cascaded. It's, it doesn't work that way. It's a logical grouping only. So here yeah they are saying that I will do a tag based IAM policy allocation, which is wrong, and they will do it for the security team and tag the instances appropriately and apply this policy in each account so this is wrong because if you do see if you have several accounts if you try to do it at each account level then it will be a time consuming process so we are talking about minimum feasible effort if you do it at each account this is the maximum effort if you do it for um, like all accounts you see this setup SAML for all accounts configure SAML and block this is taking a lot of effort so minimum effort is this you you just cr uh, create an IAM policy and cascade it through AWS org so this would be my final answer now let's have a look at this one so this is a question on Mercedes Benz like AWS direct connect is a is just like Mercedes Benz expensive and it is asking about Ethernet standards, which is like which mode? Single mode, multi mode, shielded, balanced copper cable, twisted pair cable. So if you see this technical requirement here, we are clearly stating this one that it uses single mode fiber Ethernet transport. So my answer would be this. Now why the answer is not this one or this one or this one? This is the way it has been created, man. So I showed you in the documentation and this is the correct answer. Let's go to the next question. It says the conditional element is dash in the context of rules and permissions in AWS IAM. So if you see here in this documentation, you can clearly see conditional condition element as optional. You see this condition element as optional. And hence, this would be the right answer because it is not a mandatory element. First of all, it is an optional element. And it's, here it says it always sets to null. No, it is an optional element. So sometimes you can put a value. Sometimes you do not put a value. So this is wrong. 
and it says it is crucial while writing IM policies. It is not crucial, it is optional. You may choose to write it or you may choose to ignore it. Okay. So B is my final answer. Now, do we get such questions in the exam? Yes, there it's a mixed bag question. We will get some short, some long questions, some logical, some case based or use case based questions. Okay. So please hit the subscribe and the like button. This is very important. It gives me an indication that you like this content and you want more such informative content. Now, this brings us to the end of this part. Please do not forget to refer parts 1 to 12 for previous questions. See you in the next part with some more questions. I'll bring some interesting ones.